and Ipswich. Well, the scene down at Lane Park is electric. Supporters from both clubs are enjoying themselves. And uh, there's plenty of green and white from Ipswich. And, of course, the royal blue from the diehards. Well, the Jets have done a great job to get into their gra first grand final for many a year. The Ipswich Jets, the culmination of a three-year plan. They've done it the hard way, defeating Easts and Souths in the semi-finals. Coal miners are definitely the underdogs. That's the way the coach likes it. What up? Well, you know, they're, uh, they're but to get into the grand final, they have one last stumbling block if they're to be the premiers, and that's the boys in royal blue. The Valley Diehards, their first grand final appearance since 1979. A form slump mid-season forgotten, they gained a grand final berth the easy way with a convincing victory over Souths in the major semi-final. Down at Lang Park, let's cross to Alan Thomas, Mick Vivers and Andrew Slack. Well, thanks, Chris. Grand final day from Lang Park. It's not a bad day, Mick. In fact, it's a glorious day sun-wise, but this breeze is going to play havoc out there and it's going to be a vital part of this grand final today. You're not wrong, Al. It's gusting uh, from the southwest, and whoever's going to have the scoreboard end of the ground in the second half will have the advantage and I, I do believe by that time it'll be the Seagulls that will have the advantage. I think they're going to cancel themselves out in the forwards but the backs, I think it's going to tell. I said last week there might be a bit of a weakness around Ross Williams and Robertson. Not in their defence but in their speed. I think the Dyads have got a little bit more speed out in the flanks and that's where it's going to tell. Do you expect any diff in this match? Plenty. Plenty. Softening up. It's a real grand final. As I said, I've been to Ipswich in the old Willimba Cup days. It's bringing back good memories. And, well, it'll be a lively old start, I can assure you. Right, you're going for the diehards. I'm going to go for the diehards, mainly because I think they will have the better kicking game with uh, particularly Coyne and Steve Hegarty. Well, let's go down to Andrew Slack and get his thoughts on the grand final. Well, I've been tipping the diehards all year, so I'm not going to get off the boat today. But there is a proviso, and that is that they maintain their concentration. The games they've dropped this year has been because they haven't wanted to win them. Now, if they don't want to win a grand final, they shouldn't be here. I'm sure Ross Henrik will have them at the right level. Tommy Rodonikas will have his Ipswich side even higher up. They'll be firing from go, but I don't think they'll have it. Diehards too much fast. As the players swap ends, there's the diehards team. Hegarty, the fullback, Buckley and Shields uh, on the wing. The centres are Boys and Egan. Coyne and Daunt, the halves. What a difference they can make. Wayne Cullen, Boys and Strass in the second row. That's Richard Boys, he and his brother Stephen in the side. Kelly and Walker, the props, and Billy Holmes. Bit of an unsung hero is the hooker. As we look at the Ipswich Jets, limber up, get all those muscles loose. Gavin Payne at fullback. Errol Hunter and young Tony Wattups on the wings. Ross Williams and Ken Robinson in the centres. Uh, from the squad, Craig Spark at 5'8", Ovens, Carts, Wolans, Potting, Olsen, O'Doherty and Parcel as we stand by for the end. Shane Kelly and Brett Carts takes care of him. Holmes a dummy half. Oh, Wolans has given Richard Boy some. And it's on Darren Wolans. He's not much of him, but he's the hitman for the Jets. And he's got Richard Boy's after 33 seconds. Oh. And didn't miss, and it's still on. Andrew Slack, you're closest to the action. That's if you can hear me. Andrew can't. Oh, they're really going to town. It's not a good sight. I don't mind a bit of uh, softening up, but that's ridiculous. Touch judges in. Alan Vaughan, Peter Murray. They'll be speaking with no, that's not the best pass in the world. Parts is trying to make the extra man out wide. It's gone to Williams. Hunter and Walker gets hold of Hunter. Got him a bit high. Now he wouldn't let him play. 
Now we've seen Hammer Walker do this all through the season. This is great. Towards the end of the first half, but that'll all depend on Ponting, I guess. But I think it would be folly to try and spin it too wide against this uh, this diehard three-quarter line. Glenn Haggerth is sitting on the sideline wearing 18. Errol Hunter, long way out. Not a lot of him, 67 kilos. That would be ringing wet and galoshes, wouldn't it? Yes, you're not wrong, but he's a very capable young player, very dangerous. 10 metres in from touch. 40 metres out. This will be a big plus if he can put this one over. The wind's blowing all over the place, as we told you earlier. So it'll possibly be a bit of a miracle if he can get it over. Here we'll see. How's it look? Pretty good. Real good. It's over again. It puts draw first blood. They lead by two points to nil. The grand final. You're watching it at nine. Ben Olsen. Inside the 22. Ovens. Straight spark. Spark back to O'Doherty to Parcel. And he's just short of the line. And he was looking for support that should have been there. Now Ovens. Carts. Pass has gone to Olsen. They've got a score. Dean Ponting. Dean Ponting in to score. Oh, great stuff. The Jets. They're in front by six points. Can you look for 15 on your back when you score? And has a bit of toe. Told me he runs 100 metres in boots in about 13.5 seconds. That's not pretty quick for a front rower. And the attack built from there. Great play, Ray Ovens. Wasn't it marvellous as we watch the kick? And it might be close. No, it's waved away. Andrew Slack waved away. No goal. And after 14 minutes of play, Ipswich lead die hard. Six points to nine. Ponting waits for him, misses him, but ankle taps him. Haven't seen Kelly Egan touch the ball in the game yet, Mick. Oh, yes, there's space. Away goes Shields. Is he going to try and beat Payne? He does. He won't. He's in the touch. Oh, good run. Very good run. So we see the Jets open up for the first time. He's one. And Williams, I'd say, is the other. Stephen Boyce has Each got Evans. Goal. What has happened there? Stephen Boyce has got Ray Evans. He picked him up from the two box seats. God, he did. He flicked him. Here it comes. Watch this. He didn't even have the ball. I well, think, I think what happened there, Boyce saw that he was going to be able to uh, to hit Evans as he received the ball because it was obvious from the play the ball that was coming there. He took off from a good five metres back. Once the ball was then knocked forward uh, or knocked backwards, Boy stuck the arm out and collared Ovens. I'd be surprised if he's all that badly injured, to be quite honest. I think he'll be up in a tick. Well, David Manson, I think, has ruled correctly. If we have a look at the replay again, the first hit on Ovens is actually on his shoulder. Now, what's this? I tell you what, he had to step out of the road or he was in trouble. Shoulder. And yep. then up after the shoulder. Yes, and I don't. I think you're right, Andrew. But uh, he's given him a nice, there it is, head on. Yeah, I'd rather be here than there, to be quite honest, Mick. Oh, they're attacking well today, Ipswich. This is the best they've attacked all year, Mick. We've seen a bit of them play. We haven't seen them put on this sort of stuff. O'Dowdy runs into Walker. He's not settled yet, O'Dowdy. He was stopped a ripper. Ovens. Ovens. Ponting. Ovens. Try line. The Jets in front by 10 points to nil. Oh, that is champagne football. It is well, beautiful. Get back up. He got in front of the wingers. Now he disappeared there. There he goes, rolling, rolling over. But it, look at him. You beauty, he says. Four points. 10 points to nil, Andrew. I think there are two points that can be made. No, Barkley. Barkley. He's in. Oh, against the run of play. The diehards have come up with a try. And was he offside? I think that might have hit a Valley's player boot on the change game. about. Field goal would be the go for the Jets, I'd say. Take the first settler, run it to the centre of the ground and try and get one point. This is the last tackle. He didn't even play the ball properly, did he? Muffed it up. Is that half time? It sure is. And in the Winfield Cup, Brisbane Grand Final at the break, 
Ipswich lead the Derby Hards 10 points to 4. Let's go to our 10 points to 4. And just to find out what did happen in that uh, dressing room at half time, we'll go to the sideline and here's Andrew. Well, there were two different reactions from the coaches. Tommy Radonica said to Ipswich, use the ball. Ross Henrik said to Die Hards, hold the ball. That was the story of the first half. Obviously, Tommy Radonica wants it to be moved like they did so well in that first half. Ross Henrik, they couldn't get the ball together for six tackles. He wants them to control that ball if they do play it down in Ipswich half. Tommy Radonikas, as the team, Ipswich team came out, he went up to each one individually, pointing at them, cajoling them to do their best. They're really switched on Ipswich. And just recapping on earlier matches today, the Colts grand final was won by Redcliffe, 24 to 4. And in extra time, Redcliffe won reserve grade. As Haggerty juggles and holds it. Redcliffe beat the diehards in reserve grade, 20 to 16. Hegarty on the halfway. trying to move it a bit better and uh, Peter Coyne trying to involve himself as he has now. Peter Shields. Kelly down on back play. Doesn't look to be too seriously hurt. Now Coyne. Chip. Oh, taken by Rollins. What did you think of that, brother? <laughs> Slow motion. I'll have this. Plucked it out of the air. Reminded me of Rudolph the Ryan. And now Ross Williams. Here it. Back to Parcel. Payne. What ups? Ipswich have the ball outside the 22. They're in front tender ball. Now Cart straightens it up at the quarter. Ponting. Ovens. Stuck. And I'll tell you what, I'll drop down and hold the ball for six tackles. Richard Boyce heads off to the halfway and over it. That's what worries me. Ipswich not defending as well as half. Don't. Coin. Boys. Coin. Egan. Kelly Egan. Over the top. Troy. Peter Shields is in the score. The guy hard to back in business. Kelly Egan involving himself in the game, Nick. And it's only taking him 52 minutes to do it. And look out, because Ipswich's defence hasn't been good at all. Andrew? Well, once again, created by a man backing up, supporting the ball. Coin through a pass. That looks pretty good. It's up and over. An even ball game. Ten points all to die hard in Ipswich. You're watching the Brisbane Grand Final on nine Wide World of Sports. It's coming back. It's coming back. Oh, what a gem. What a gem. He started that well out to the left. Brought it back right between the sticks. Die hearts at the front. 12 to 10. Here comes Kelly. 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 Down. Oh, what a great try. My word, that's a great try. Shane Kelly's in to score. You won't see better determination than that. Die hearts in front. 16 to 10, Nick, and that's the gutsiest try of the year. It was great defence too thrown at him from Ipswich, but he just keep, kept propelling himself. Ipswich gone into the huddle now. They're in grave trouble. Watch this. He took it and he went through one, two, three, then more came four, and that was a try, fair and square. He's warming up on the uh, touchline. So Hegarty, no, he took that one away. So no goal. Diehards lead it, which 16 points to 10. 22 minutes left of the ref. Still going. And he's tackled now. And he lost five metres on that last run. Rion Pierce to take it straight. And hard. Inside the 22. It looks as though he's replaced Ziggy Strassen. Now it's Holmes. A way to do it. Field goal. Over. That's the seven point buffer. Brett Gaunt kicks a field goal, and the Die Hards lead by 17 points to 10. The Winfield Cup from Lang Park, the grand final, the nine wide world of sports. Gaunt's got him, but Ipswich haven't given up yet. Morrissey a dummy half, Steve Brules with the ball now, and then Spark, Robertson, Kenny Robertson, Kenny beat Hegarty. Yes, he does! That's a try! That's a try! 
But this is, this is a determined run from the kid, and a good try. 17 to 14, three minutes and 40 seconds showing on the clock. Andrew Slack, if we look at Robinson, and the Jets are still in business. Well, I'll tell you what diehards will be talking about. That last game against Ipswich at uh, diehards' home ground, they lost in the last minute. Hunter can't convert. Three points the difference. The diehards lead the Jets 17 to 14. Three and a half minutes to go. Morrissey. Yes, it's gone to Spark. 60 seconds to go. Rule. Cuts. Long floater. Hunter. Olsen. Forward pass, but play on. They keep it alive. Cuts. 48 seconds. Walters. Morrissey. Inside the rail. 35 seconds. Diehards lead 17 to 14. Cuts. At the quarter. 25 seconds to go. Williams at dummy half. They keep it alive. Olsen, Hunter, 15 seconds, last tackle. This is it. Whoa. He's died at the ball. Oh, it's a penalty. Offside, quick tap. Two, one, the full time siren's gone. That's all alive. The forward pass. Grand final's over. What a thrill of the guy who has win it. 17 points to 14, and Farmer, this is it, everything. It had everything, and those people have walked out the gate, missed a great finish. And top marks did switch. They came as the underdogs. They didn't win it, but they'll bring us back again next year. And that was a great, great standard of uh, football. Top marks of the diehards. We knew they could win. They, they really had everything to lose, the diehards, today. But they did play well in that second half. Well, what about the last couple of minutes? I don't want that over again. I won't get the journey. Yes, as you counted down the seconds. And, and we will go now to Andrew Slack. Let's have a look at the full-time statistics. And Ipswich had all the uh, possession. Uh, the tries were three apiece. The goals were the difference. The diehards had the better of those. And they won the match by 17 points to 14. Well, it's all still happening down at Lang Park. Let's cross for the presentation of the Winfield Cup. Well, there you see the Deputy uh, Prime Minister giving it to Peter Coyne, and he's very proud of that. They've earned it the hard way. Everyone wanted it switch to win today just for the game, but these guys really like did go so well. And we'll listen to Pete, what Pete says. Uh, trophy. Also, I'd like to thank Winfield for their obvious uh, sponsorship, as well as Moran Group, who have sponsored us through 1988. Um, commiserations to the Ipswich guys, it was one of the hardest games we've played, or I've played ever, I think. They sort of stuck to their guns to the end. It was probably only uh, a, few, a few little breaks that we came out on top. Also, thanks to the supporters from both sides that came out today, and it was a real difference, a nice change to sort of have a few people at the game for us. Thanks very much. Yeah. 